For today's reflection, I decided to break the gospel in stanzas or pretty much like sentence by sentence to draw deeper meanings from this beautiful passage from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10. And it goes like this. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, that's how the Gospel begins. The context of today's passage is the city of Jericho. It's in the Judean desert. It's the lowest city on earth because it is below the sea level. It is 905 feet below the sea level. And it is also the oldest city in the world. It's 9,000 years old. There are archaeological remains dating as far back as that time. So Jesus is precisely in the lowest point of earth, in the middle of the Judean desert. It is a depression. And right there, he has disciples, and he has plenty of them, because the gospel tells us that he had a sizable crowd following him. So when I think of Jericho, the lowest point, I think of when we are at our lowest point. I think of episodes of depression, I think of the desert of isolation, and there Jesus meets us. And the Gospel continues. Bartimaeus, a blind man, the song of Timaeus, sat by the road begging, by the roadside. Interesting that this man was identified by his disability a blind man. Um, he was not a man who happened to suffer blindness, but he was identified by his disability. It's interesting that that's the way that he is described. And we realize that our disabilities are things that happen to us. They don't identify us. We are beloved children of God. Then he is also identified by the name of his father. Actually, his name is Bar Timios. The name Bar in Aramaic means son, son of Timios. So it's almost like when you know somebody, not for who that person actually is, but in relationship to somebody else. The son of so and so, or the daughter of so and so. And that's exactly what happened to this man, Bar Timaeus, the son of Timaeus. And he is not on the path, but on the side. And he is begging. So those are several layers that this man is at the margin of society. I think of all of us begging because he was a beggar. All of us who are professional beggars, because that's what we are. Always begging for attention, the attention of mom and dad when we were kids, remember? Begging for the affirmation of our teachers in school. Nowadays, begging for affirmation of social media. Looking to receive honor from our superiors or coworkers. Begging for the affirmation of the world. But Jesus wanted more of this man. But this man was still on the side of the road. The Gospel continues. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, Bartimaeus began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Now, he may have been a blind man, but he could hear well, because he could hear that Jesus was approaching. People who have a disability, they may develop a stronger sense of the other abilities they have. They may have one disability, but the other abilities get stronger. It's an interesting thing. So he could cry out in a loud voice. Notice, he calls for Jesus. Jesus, that's his name, God saves. Son of David, 
the relationship that Jesus had with his ancestry. Jesus, son of David. Eventually, the crowds of Jerusalem would call Jesus by the same title when he entered Jerusalem. Hosanna to the son of David. They learned to call Jesus that way from this man, Bartimaeus. And the gospel continues. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. Shh! Don't bother the master. Who has not been silenced by others? Perhaps this is one of our most painful memories, leaving even a wound in our souls. Maybe a parent. Don't say nothing. Maybe someone who used to be a friend, or perhaps a former spouse who took away our freedom to speak, or even ourselves, that self-deprecating talk that says, Shh, silence, don't say anything, you might get hurt again. And the gospel continues. But he kept talking. He kept calling out all the more. Son of David, have pity on me. Notice that it's Bartimaeus who looks for Jesus. What would he have thought? I don't want to miss Jesus. He is passing by. He is leaving Jericho. What if I don't see him again? This might be my only chance. And I don't want to miss that chance. Son of David, have pity on me. And the gospel continues. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. Just think of this. Jesus stopped. Jesus stopped for me. Jesus stopped to call me. Probably Bartimaeus thought. Take courage. Get up. Here we learn about the other ability this man had. He may not have been able to see, but he certainly could walk. So many times bowed down by our brokenness, unable to see through the darkness of our lives, we think we cannot move forward. We forget that our blindness does not affect our sense of mobility. We can still get up. We can still move forward towards the Lord. And the gospel continues. He threw aside his cloak and came to Jesus. He had to spring up. Instead of real relationships, Bartimaeus had his cloak. It kept him warm, warm enough anyways. It wasn't the warmth of hearth and home, but it was enough to survive and endure, because he was a beggar after all. The cloak was the symbol of protection against a hostile world, but it also protected him from people who wanted to have a real relationship with him. He could hide himself in the cloak, staying isolated physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I imagine that most of the time, he did not want to be seen, but Jesus saw him. He no longer needed that cloak. What are the cloaks of my life? What are those barriers of protection that keep me safe from being hurt? Now that Jesus looks at me with compassion, I don't need them anymore. I don't need that cloak. I can throw the cloak away. And there is no need to pick it up again. Probably that's what Bartimaeus thought. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Notice that Jesus does not impose himself in people's lives. He will not intervene without asking first. He wants our yes. He wants our fiat. 
What do you want me to do for you? He asks. Notice that this is the same question that he asked last week to the sons of Zebedee. Now, their answer was very different because they wanted the places of honor. They wanted to sit at the right and at the left of Jesus. They wanted power. Bartimaeus is a little bit more humble. He just wants the basic daily ability of vision, just like everybody else has. By his request, Master, I want to see, Martimios already has much better vision than all the other residents of the city of Jericho. What kind of healing do I want to receive from Jesus? Healing starts by asking with a humble heart. Jesus told him, Go your way, your faith has saved you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the way. It's interesting to see that Jesus did not ask him to become his follower. He told him to go his way, healed. But now that Bartimaeus was able to see, he wanted to be closer to the source of light and to follow Jesus on the way. That would be the way from Jericho to Jerusalem. That was the most dangerous path. That was the valley of the shadow of death, the road from Jericho to Jerusalem, mentioned in Psalm 23. That's the same route of the man that was left half death on the road and that the good Samaritan had to pick up and take care of with compassion. It's on this way that now Bartimaeus would follow Jesus. Bartimaeus did not just re recover his sight, he recovered his courage as well. The prayer of Bartimaeus was not a long prayer. It was only one sentence long. Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. That's it. Maybe we should just pray it just like him. When we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, Jesus, Son of David, have pity on me. When we experience the rejection of the world, Jesus, Son of David, have pity on me. When we can't forgive ourselves, Jesus, Son of David, have pity on me. When we truly desire to walk the darkest valley with Jesus, for the sake of Jesus, Jesus, Son of David, have pity on me. Amen.